We've had 27 years of terminal poverty, even among health workers, he says. We all deserve better conditions. Colombia is now going into its second week of protests, sparked by proposed tax hikes on the poor and the middle class, a proposal made by the right-wing government led by President Ivan Duque. First, before I get more into this story and what has happened with this proposal and why these protests are still going on, first, here's a clip from CBC News giving you an idea of what these protests look like. Months of frustrations have boiled over onto the streets of Colombia's biggest cities. Violent clashes fueled by the pandemic and poverty, shortages of food and fuel. This doctor says he's fed up. We've had 27 years of terminal poverty, even among health workers, he says. We all deserve better conditions. So as you see, there is a doctor, part of these, these protests. These protests consist of a movement of all working class people. So doctors, trade unionists, activists, teachers, uh, students, indigenous groups, small business owners, essentially poor and middle income people from all professions as there has been an ongoing crisis when it comes to income inequality in Colombia. Now, obviously, COVID and the Colombian government's mishandling of it has led to the closures of many small and medium sized businesses, leading to an unemployment rate that is above now 14% and a poverty rate that keeps growing. So as the doctor mentioned there, there was this there was an issue with poverty even before the pandemic. So a little more on that here. Colombia's extreme, this is from 2018, Colombia's extreme inequality, income inequality increased in 2018 after a decade of gradual decrease. The top 10% of the country's earners received almost 40% of the country's income, which is 10 times what the bottom 20% earned, according to the World Bank. So the, the dark blue here, this is the uh, top 10% receiving 40% of the income and obviously, this has only gotten worse since the pandemic started. So meanwhile, um, an economic think tank in uh, Colombia estimated that the country's poverty rate increased from 34.7% in 2019 to between 47 and 49% of the population last year. This means that some 25 million people lived off less than $91 per month by the end of last year. An estimated 15 million of these Colombians could only afford two meals a day and approximately 8 million of them are literally starving. Now, when we get to the actual the tax reform proposal that has since been withdrawn, I'll get to more on that in a second, but the, the taxes that were being proposed here were specifically targeted on the poor and the middle class. So increasing taxes on food, on public transportation, medication, books, basic needs like water, gas, electricity, internet. So taxes that specifically target the poor and the middle class. If you're incredibly wealthy, a tax on food is not really going to impact you. But if you're poor, that tax is going to have a an incredible impact specifically on the poor and the, the middle class. Now, following these protests, Colombian President Ivan Duque withdrew his tax reform proposal. And in fact, uh, the finance minister resigned following the withdrawal of that proposal. But experts say demonstrations are expected to go on. Alicia Gomez, a 51-year-old cleaner who supports the protest, told Al Jazeera that Colombians are tired of the government putting more taxes on the population, which is already struggling due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A national strike was called last Wednesday by the country's largest unions, and protests have been ongoing since then in Bogota, Medellin, and Cali, among other cities. Cali has seen the most intense clashes between protesters and police. Now, you may be wondering why are these protests still going on if the tax reform proposal has been withdrawn. Well, as I said, it's more than just that proposal. So unions are now calling for a withdrawal of a proposed health reform and a guaranteed basic income of 1 million pesos, $260 American for all Colombians, as well as the demilitarization of cities, an end to the ongoing police violence and the dismantling of heavy handed riot police known as SMAD. So the police violence is the other major piece of the story. Here is more on that from CBC News. But security forces' response to the demonstrations, including military helicopters seen shooting at protesters below, has only intensified anger in the streets. At least 24 people have been killed, including a 17-year-old who kicked a police officer on a motorbike, then got shot. So that was just a small example 
of the violence that is going on in Colombia. There are many videos online on Twitter showing the police violence aimed at protesters. And it's gotten to the point now where the UN has actually come out and condemned this violence, saying uh, in part here, quote, we are deeply alarmed at developments in Cali overnight where police opened fire on demonstrators and a number of people were killed and injured, a UN, UN human rights spokesperson said on Tuesday. One last thing here. You may have seen the Colombian flag uh, upside down being shared around. So this is a symbol of this movement. This uh, account here, which appears to be from Colombia. Again, this is Twitter. Impossible to know who this person actually is, but you are seeing uh, a lot of this being shared. So you may have seen our flag upside down as a symbol. This is our cry for help. Our way to tell the world this is not just a country of salsa and carnivals. Our way to tell the world we're being killed as a sign of protest. So you have here a working class movement fighting against the their oppressive, uh, oppressive right wing government. And it's important we cover this story. I got several messages asking me to cover this as there was very little mainstream press coverage of it up to this point. There's there's a little more now. But it's important that we get the word out because clearly this story going international is what helped to push the Colombian government to withdraw their tax reform proposal. And now that these protests continue going on to protest the police violence and and call for you know more uh, equality in the country, it's important this is covered internationally as it will help to grow the movement against this far right-wing government and potentially move them to do more to help their people.